This video is sponsored by NordVPN. Get stick! Greetings, I'm Shad, and I need to talk to you about one of the most significant and important weapons in all human history. So much so that recently I have found it is grossly underappreciated, not only in the historical context, but even in a modern context. And what weapon? Well, you probably, you know, figured it out by now. Stick! The almighty, the glorious, the wonderful stick! Now, I'm not saying the stick is the best weapon in the world, not by a long shot. In fact, there are many weapons that are better than it. Though, in terms of how much better, well, it kind of depends, actually, because a mace, okay, is better, but in some cases only marginally so. If it's a shorter mace, okay, with a smaller head, well, that can arguably produce about as much force as a larger, you know, girthy stick, okay? So it actually depends, because sticks actually come in a lot of different shapes and sizes. And you think the stick is a stick? Well, the actual diameter of the stick matters, the type of wood or material that it's made out of, because the weight matters, and of course, the length matters. And so you can get pretty pathetic little sticks, but you can also get big, large, meaty, girthy sticks that you can just wrap around the shaft and really swing it around, right? So, what type of stick do you want? You want a big stick. As good old Teddy Roosevelt said, speak softly and carry a big stick. That man knew what was up. Even the follow-up line of that is, and you will go far. He got stick. Good on him, okay? So, let's break it down a little bit. First of all, I think you need to give stick props for the fact that it is actually the foundation of so many other important weapons, okay? Look at the mace, look at the spear, look at the Beck de Corbin, look at the halberd. You can even say the sword to a certain extent, but I think actually the sword, even in jest when I'm joking around, okay, the sword is not really a stick-like weapon, okay? It's too far removed because one of the advantages of stick is that you can grab it any length of the shaft that you want, okay? Like, grab it anywhere you where you want. So, swords have advantages and limitations, but if you look at, like, other things, like, again, like spears, halberds, maces, any, any shafted weapon, axes! Axes! Oh my goodness! Stick! So give props to stick for being the foundation of so many awesome weapons, but the stick by itself is a phenomenal weapon. Now you need to think about this because when you look at stick as a weapon, you're also going to be looking at really other important weapons that we use heaps, like the club, also the cane, the baton, and other things like that. And the mace is very much, depending on the type of mace, because sometimes you can get a really big flange mace, but sometimes you can get really small maces, again okay, with a small kind of, you know, mace head. They're not too far removed from a gl glorious good old stick. And then there are kind of glorified sticks, some that we've covered on this channel already, like the uh, Gottendag. Okay, that is basically a club with a metal top and a spike. It's like a, it's a really interesting weapon. So you don't need too much variation to just upgrade the stick tremendously. Now, is the stick worse than all these other variants? Of course it is. I'm not saying the stick is better, but the differences are not nearly as much as some people might assume. The lethality that you can get out of a stick is tremendous, and it comes with very few detriments, okay? If it's a good, strong, girthy stick, it's not going to break on you too easily. It's going to do the job that you want. Unlike really poor physically disabled sticks that were intentionally broken, and this comes with a whole host of problems. Some people have said that my analysis of the nunchuck as inferior sticks were unfair because you can compare any weapon to a superior weapon, and by that metric it's worse, like compare a stick or a sword to a gun. That's not the point. Of course better weapons make other weapons inferior. I'd never say a stick is better than a sword or a gun or stuff like that. But the key point of comparison is how lethal they are in comparison to these other better weapons and how many problems, if any, actually comes with it. And if the lethality that you can gain out of such a weapon is only comparable to other weapons of similar size and mass, and it comes with a whole host of other problems and indeed some ways in which your ability to attack gets nullified completely, that kind of makes it a garbage weapon. But a stick on its own is remarkably effective in many situations. And then there is also the ease of manufacture, finding it. It's not hard to get a stick. And so right back to the dawn of time, 
almost, okay, I'm exaggerating, but one of the first weapons we picked up, okay, was good old stick. Stick or rock? Now rock is a good comparison actually, maybe I need to look at rocks a bit more later. So really, the stick is a bit underappreciated in my opinion, even in the historical kind of review, and we look at fancy and other things like that, because I don't see many adventurers picking the good old club, which is just differently shaped stick. It tapers up to a wider head, right? Few people use a good old club, but still the club is great, but I get it, because there are more lethal weapons, but in, in a pinch, if you need something, okay, something like this is really, really good. But sticks are grossly underappreciated in the modern context. This was the other kind of inspiration that I need to make this video underappreciated. Not only historic, because the stick is still a modern weapon, technically. It's not even a historic weapon that you don't get to see used in, uh, you know, the modern day. Because the stick, and this is what well, I just want to point out, is still a phenomenal pick as a self-defense weapon. But before I get there, I want to talk to you a little bit about your digital defense. Specifically, this video's sponsor, which is NordVPN. You know that quote I shared? by President Roosevelt, speak quietly but carry a big stick. The idea behind that is that by carrying a big stick you can avoid the fight by just like, do you really want to fight me? I got a big stick, right? It's interesting how VPN kind of operates in a similar way, where instead of avoiding like an actual attack on your computer where the Trojan, any number of things, someone's trying to find your data, you can avoid many threats completely because a VPN gives you a masked IP address and masks your computer's identity online. That's really important. That means people can't find out where you are and they have trouble accessing or finding your computer to actually get in there and do damage. And so it's much better to avoid such, you know, attacks like that. And a VPN does it. So they, they got a huge utility. They're actually really important. My entire livelihood is online, okay? And so every layer of security is tremendously important. And I really recommend because there are so many threats now that every additional layer is really significant. Now, now, will a VPN make you invulnerable? It won't, but it's an additional layer, and a very important one that I highly recommend. I use it myself, I wouldn't recommend it if I didn't, and NordVPN is brilliant. They have over 5,400 servers in 59 countries, it doesn't slow down your internet. One account enables you to install it on up to six devices, so you can get that additional peace of mind on multiple devices, and it does something in addition that's really useful. It means you can access region-locked content. And there's far more region-locked content even on your favourite streaming devices than you might be aware of, because the licensing deals for certain shows are very different between countries. There's a a lot of shows that aren't even available to me in Australia, like the one I've mentioned before, Secrets of Great British Castles on Netflix. In Australia, I can't get access to it, but using my NordVPN account, it's there. Which is a brilliant feature, and then you get the added peace of mind as well. If you're on the fence about this, not only is it really affordable, if you go to nordvpn.com forward slash Shadowversity, you're going to get a huge discount on a two-year plan, but if you use my promo code Shadowversity, you'll get an additional month free, and there's a 30-day money-back guarantee. And so you can give it a try, and you need 30-day money-back if it's not working out, but I really think you're going to find that the additional security and the convenience of, you know, accessing regional content is awesome and you're going to be like me and you're going to stick with it. And I'm fully on board now, so really, it's worth giving it a try if you haven't tried on already. NordVPN is one of the best and like I said, you'll get a huge discount on a two-year plan if you go to nordvpn.com forward slash Shadowversity and if you use my promo code Shadowversity, you'll get an extra month for free with that 30 day money back guarantee as well. So thank you to Nord for sponsoring this video. And now let's get back to talking about the mighty glorious stick and particularly the walking stick and how great it is. Because the stick, and this is what well, I just want to point out, is still a phenomenal pick as a self-defense weapon. And this is the comparison that people have been kind of bringing up because I've been criticizing the nunchucks as of late. And one of the points of comparison or contention that people have been raising that the nunchuck is more concealable and therefore easy to carry with you as a self-defense weapon. I've been thinking about that, and I disagree. And I'm hinting at why. Can you guess why? Like, what am I doing right here? I'm leaning on my stick. Oh, look at this. The stick is also a walking stick. Now, I want to first break down the idea of concealability as a uh, advantage. Okay? I, I Really, and please go with me here. Let's both break this down about concealability. Is it actually an advantage versus a weapon that you don't need to conceal? 
Think about need, okay? If you can carry effectively what is a weapon and it not need to be concealed, you would effectively be able to take that weapon with you in more locations than the weapon that you would need to conceal it. Why would you need to conceal a weapon? Some people say to surprise the opponent. Interesting, because you'd think a person who's about to attack you would be more hesitant, more reluctant to attack you if they saw that you were armed. That's the first thing, okay? Because ultimately, this is the reality. We would want to avoid confrontation. And so, you know, speak softly and carry a big stick. Where is that philosophy kind of coming from? What does carry a big stick mean? Ward off, you know, any like, think about even on the, the scale of nations, whereas the biggest stick usually essentially is implying that people, opponents, other countries are more reluctant to fight him because they got such a big bloody stick. Okay, so the idea of concealing a weapon actually comes with a negative factor that people think you're unarmed and are more likely to attack you then. So in my mind, that idea of surprising your opponent is a negative because there's a higher chance that you wouldn't even have an opponent to need to use a weapon against. If they knew you had the weapon, they wouldn't want to fight you because of it, okay? Now granted, it's not going to work if they have a superior weapon or anything like that, but it's the chance. Having a, an open carried weapon reduces the chances of people attacking you because they know you're more capable of fighting. So therefore, a weapon that you don't need to conceal, in my mind, if it's still a good effective weapon, is inherently already superior if it still can do just as much damage, you can fight with it, doesn't have problems, everything like that, already a superior weapon. Then people, okay, so what if you need to conceal it to take the weapon into places where you're not allowed to have them? That would be a problem if there were legitimate places in which you could not carry a weapon just as effective, that's even more so. And so the point of comparison that I think you clearly know where I'm going, but I've already mentioned it, is the walking stick. <laughs> would not part an old man from his walking stick. Okay, this is not an illegal weapon in any means. I don't think there's any country that has made the walking stick illegal. And you can absolutely get ones that are crazy good weapons, all right? I've even ordered one. Hasn't come in yet, but we're gonna test it out, okay? I'm gonna be testing out the Cold Steel Self-Defense City Walking Cane. Now, I'm not necessarily giving you a shout out. I don't know how good it is, but so far reviews seem to be pretty good. I'm gonna test it out myself. But, okay, I've got this one that I bought off eBay, and it has a real, like, this is essentially a mace, okay? There's one kind of problem with it. The shaft is a bit weak. So what, what could you do? What could you do to really make this a self-defense item? <laughs> doesn't, doesn't take long. So, I mean, this, this is the, the thing. Just get rid of that. Upgrade. <laughs> so what type of wood is this? This is actually the handle of uh, a sledgehammer, essentially. A sledgehammer and also, funnily enough, the handles for shovels are just like, this is some of the densest, hardest wood that you will find in a hardware store. This this bit of the wood is almost 50% to 100% more dense than this. Like, it's shocking. This is about 0.6 kilos. This thing here, 1.2 kilos now. This, oh my goodness. Look at that. Look at this, it's a, it's a walking stick. This is a viciously dangerous weapon, okay? It has a really solid knob. There is one problem that we found in testing that um, it, it, it can actually split, so we're gonna wire up it. Like a proper hafted kind of stick, you would want it around the outside of the wood, not screwed on the inside. But if we do a wire wrap to hold it together, that'll actually still be really solid and hold it. But the weight distribution of this actually is like, you don't even need, the the, weight you have behind this end, and this actually creates a nice little handle, is incredible. Let me show you. So I've already shown how devastating this stick can hit in my nunchuck videos where I compare the striking power to this thing. And I've showed that this thing is capable of knocking over this dummy, all right? Usually two-handed, not a problem. One-handed though, is a bit is a bit difficult, okay? So I'm gonna do a run up, I'm gonna do as hard a strike as I can, and then we're gonna compare it to my new walking stick, okay? Ah! It's close. All right, let's compare this. Ah! <laughs> Already, this is striking with huge amounts of power. I wonder if I can knock him over without a run up. Just standing here, just like this. Ready? Ah! Now compare this with a two-handed strike right here. Now people usually think that sticks are, they telegraph hits a lot because you need a wind up, you don't need a wind up. In fact, you can hit devastatingly like with this, from this position here, 
you can strike in so many different angles and not telegraph without people knowing where you're going to be striking from. And look at the power that I'll be able to generate from a strike to this position. Ah! Like, you, you are not going to want to get hit with good old stick. Oh, talk about speed where you're here and you don't know which you know area, you're just going to and you strike back into the position, okay? And oh, and then of course it's walking sick. Look at how classic it is. We need to break something. All right, let's also test some destructive capacity here. So I'm going to test it with my old stick compared to the new one. But while we're here, I thought you know. We do not see many tests with uh, nunchucks on these things because people say they hit with so much force and everything. It's like, uh, okay, let's, let's also test it out how much force. And we'll start with two because I wonder if nunchucks will actually be able to break. You don't see many people breaking actual boards with nunchucks. And by the way, not those ones where you're cutting along the, the grain where you could just split it by pressing down. I mean, has anyone seen that, uh, that video where they're on this talk show and they got the, the cinder block and um, the talk show host is like, he just presses it and it breaks apart. There is so much bullcrap martial arts. So what is this? This is uh, skirting. So you know the thing that uh, you put on the bottom of uh, your wall in your house? That's what this is. Actually, it's got a bit of flex in it. And so this stuff is uh, harder than the regular board things because it uh, actually has no grain. It's a, what is it? I forget what it's called, but it's uh, like a, it's a, it's a sawdust and glue made together. It's not like actual, actual wood grain wood. And so that means it will have less strength than if the grain was going lengthwise, but it has way more strength than the length that's going this way. And whenever people are cutting boards, it's always along the grain. All right here, this isn't about technique, it's about power. And so I'm putting my weight into it, okay? Nada. Was that where I hit? Because I, I might have, I feel, felt like I hit on the edge and it went down like that. So maybe if I hit more central on the nunchuck like this, so most of the mass will get transferred into the target. But that was nothing. So about that, that's the distance we want in this. It broke. You know what it didn't break? <laughs> didn't break this. We did a quick repair job because now we've got two fresh new boards and I'll do a two-handed swing to see if we can actually get any damage on this. Okay, I reckon right in the center is where we want to hit. It's gonna be two hand. Ah! Okay, we got some damage on one. Didn't get damage on two. So, this was the result of the two-handed nunchuck strike. Damage on one. It's not bad. Okay, we got that. Damage on the second. There's no discernible damage on the second one. No discernible damage at all. Okay, so now two unbroken ones again. And this is a stick of similar mass and length. It's made out of the same piece of wood as those nunchucks. Let's see what damage we can do with this one. I think the stick did a, just a little bit more damage, don't you? <laughs> two fresh boards. Okay, so look at this thing. All right, let's test this out. Ready? Ah! Man, that was power. I ripped that from there. But, uh, hmm, which one is hitting with more power? Like, really? Man, oh, it broke it. It actually snapped the metal. <laughs> That's how much force is behind it. It snapped the bolt. It actually snapped the bolt off from inside. <laughs> I know which weapon I'd want to take with me. So this is a devastating weapon. I can hit way harder with this thing than I could even with my lovely, you know, wacky stick. I love this thing. This thing hits way harder. Like I could knock that, you know, dummy over one handed with nowhere near the difficulty as when I tried it with this because the mass in it is just crazy. But the speed in which you can strike with and the just how 
heavy and solid this is, and you can still jerk it. Oh, this is a, a vicious, vicious weapon, yet it is also perfectly legal, perfectly acceptable as the good old walking stick. Now, maybe some people say, but walking sticks, I mean, you need a sore leg. Do you? No, no, like, you know, do you need to actually have to have a limp to use a walking stick? Where is that in the law? No, because the walking stick serves a, another purpose aside from just helping people walk who have a sore leg. They are a legitimate, awesome fashion accessory. I'm not kidding, okay? I want to talk about the fashion accessory a bit more, but I want to round off my thoughts about concealability versus a weapon you don't even need to conceal. Because going back to that idea, okay, a weapon you don't need to conceal already has advantages because it shows people you're armed, but on top of that, a weapon you need to conceal, you legitimately will get in trouble if you're caught holding the weapon. That's a bit of a problem then, isn't it? Because why do you need to conceal it? Think about it, the only reason why you really need to conceal it is to hide it from others. Why are you doing it? Surprise? No, that's, that, that's not a good argument. So the other reason why you'd want to conceal it outside of that is because People might take it off you if they see you holding it because you're not allowed to carry it. So you're breaking some kind of rule in the rule of whatever place you're visiting that doesn't allow certain weapons or if the weapon by itself is simply illegal in your country. And you know the comparison I'm making is because people say these things are great because you can conceal them. Really, why do you need to conceal them? What if people say it's convenience of carry, okay? Nunchucks, you can slip into your belt and you don't need to, you know, carry it around and stuff for convenience. Well, this is not a very inconvenient thing. As in fact, it's a fashion, it makes you look better by holding it. And if you really feel you need your hands free when you're carrying a wonderful, dapper, you know, classy cane, just attach a lanyard to it. Look at this, look at this, right there. And then you can do what you need to do, talk, and it's perfectly on hand. So whatever you're doing, it's right here, ready to go. And depending on the length, you can put it all the way up the shoulder to make it really out of the way. And it also means it's far more difficult to get disarmed. And you can just wrap it up, you're ready to go. And uh, so, benefits all around, isn't it? So absolutely, like a lanyard connected to a walking stick is a wonderful addition and uh, you know, even even a variable like sized one that you can adjust even better. So if the, it comes to where you really, really want your hands free, you can literally hike it up over your shoulder and it's on hand ready to go. But you don't really need to because it's a fashion accessory. Now, I want to elaborate on this more because I personally want to bring the uh, awesome, you know, walking cane back into the mainstream because you don't need to be overly dressed to just take a walking cane with you. No, you know, and in fact, people barely look at you twice when you're carrying one with you. So to test this, when we were upgrading this, you know, walking stick to get a bigger, meatier bit of wood for it, well, I took my walking cane to me to the hardware store. And as we're walking around, I'm walking with my stick and I'm in casual dress, yet I have my walking stick with me. No one's even questioning or anything, okay? Because it's a fashion accessory, but also if anyone really is like, so yeah, I've got a bit of a sore knee if you really need to sell it, but you don't, you, like, I just like walking sticks. That's all you need. You don't need to justify it anymore. You like walking sticks and no one's going to tell you not to take it with you. Like, seriously. I had an odd experience a long time ago when I realized, you know, walking sticks are great fashion accessories. They make you look like just cooler. I really do think that is I was watching a Jet Li movie and I think it was Romeo Must Die. So not a great movie, but the fight scenes are not bad here and there. Um, it could be Cradle to the Grave. I think, no, I think it's Romeo Must Die. I, got, I get it mixed up. But anyway, he, he, like, spoiler, you're not missing much, but at the beginning of the film, he, he has a brother, okay? I won't say what happens to his brother, but his brother has a, he, he gets, he, he's, there's a, a nice car pulls up, he gets out, and he's going to a party, and he has a walking stick with him. And I remember watching, I didn't think twice, like, hey, that looks cool. And then he gets into a fight, Guess what he uses in the fight? It was like, oh, it's a weapon too! Look at that, isn't that amazing? But I just found it interesting that I didn't really question why he had the, like, I just, when I first saw it, and this was like when I was a kid, right? Like teenager. When I first saw it, I instantly thought, it's to raise his look. I wasn't thinking of it as a weapon, but when he whips it out as a weapon, I was like, of course, this is a stick! It's an almighty stick! And I didn't even think that he had the stick. He's, he's got stick! He got stick! You can have stick too! And you can look damn cool. Cause look at look at the look at the poses. Look at his pose. 
It's an amazing pose. So in my opinion, and I mean this genuinely, a, a walking stick that is actually made robust to be able to hit things with is actually one of the best self-defense items you can carry with you in the modern day. There are some other really interesting kind of things about self-defense where like a really high powered flashlight is a great, so because the purpose of a self-defense weapon shouldn't be to defeat the other guy, it's to protect yourself so you don't get injured or hurt and to protect others. So that doesn't necessarily mean it has to do damage. If you can cause the opponent to disengage to not fight you, that self-defense tool achieved its purpose. Now, could you call a flashlight a self-defense weapon? It's not really a weapon, but it is a self-defense tool. But if you need a self-defense weapon where you actually do have to fight people off, this right here is orders of magnitude better than some of the things that people try and promote as good self-defense weapons. This poor physically disabled stick, what happened to you? What happened to you? So really, let's bring the almighty stick particularly the walking stick, back into the mainstream. I, I'm genuinely, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a, like a, an actual combat ready walking stick with me in most places I go. It's like, cause you can sell it even in casual dress. It's a great self-defense tool. And uh, it's also an awesome fashion accessory, really. Embrace it. Embrace stick. And that's what I wanted to share. Let's give the humble, the simple, but yet glorious stick some love again, okay? Because it's a great weapon, still, not as good as every other weapon, but because it comes with so few issues, it's so effective, it's still very highly lethal in many instances, so portable, not illegal, like for so many reasons. Actually, it's great. It's not as great as other weapons, but because it doesn't come with the whole host and myriad of problems that other certain weapons can come with, I, it's a great thing, particularly because of how, how stylish it can be. So thank you for watching. I wanted to share that with you. Um, I hope you've enjoyed, and of course, I hope to see you in the next video here on Chatterversity. So until that time, farewell. Yes, I'm posing. I can such nice poses with the walking stick.